Howdy, I got a new broom. I chose a red color since it's the colors of the warriors. And its first job has been this one. After all, it turned out I'm a witch. It seems that I fulfill many things or requirements in order to be a witch. So I'm very proud of my new broom and very excited about this rock, which has many meteorite craters aligned, or they are not meteorite craters at all. And totally straight quartz veins. and 90 degrees crossings in the rocks and many other things there is quite much work still waiting since cleaning a rock is not really work it's just uh, How to put it? Maybe a reaction of uh, curiosity or something. But anyway, look at this weather map. It is totally dry in this region here. Maybe it extends a little bit more there. And it is totally wet in the region here. Heavy thunderstorms and hail and probably also some tornado-like wind structures in Germany today, tonight, tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, it isn't good to have this kind of hail because it not only destroys cars, It might also destroy crops. Climate change. It's all about the sun. Weather patterns and all that. That's insider.com. Ukraine exported more than 140 million dollars of wheat to the US before the pandemic with the latest disruption adding to price woes. An expert told the UN that the world has only 10 weeks of wheat supplies left. Ten weeks. The world has about 10 weeks of wheat supplies stored as Russia's invasion of the Ukraine enters its fourth month, a food insecurity expert told the UN. Sarah Menker, the CEO of Agriculture Analytics from Grow Intelligence, told the UN Security Council that the Russia-Ukraine war was not the cause of a food security crisis but simply added fuel to a fire that was long burning. I want to stress this really out for everyone to understand that the Russia-Ukraine war was not the cause of the feud security crisis. It's also not the flu. Ukraine is considered the world's bread basket. And Russia and Ukraine combined account for almost a third of the world's wet exports. And I don't know if it's wheat or wet. 
English is not my mother's tongue, so I don't care too much. This comes as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken accused Russia of using food as a weapon. Blinken, also addressing the U.N. Security Council, said that Russia was holding food hostage not just for Ukrainians, but for millions across the world. The Russian government seems to think that using food as a weapon will help accomplish what its invasion was not to break the spirit of the Ukrainian people, Blinken said. Menker said, droughts across the world are contributing to declining well resources. Menker said global food supplies are also being impacted by climate change and fertilizer shortages. We currently only have 10 weeks of global consumption sitting in inventory around the world. Conditions today are worse than those experienced in 2007 and 2008. Menker said, estimates from official government agencies from across the world show that wheat inventory is at 33% of annual consumption, but added that models created by Grow Intelligence show that the figure may actually be closer to 20, a level not seen since 27 or 28. It is important to know that the lowest grain inventory levels the world has ever seen are now occurring. While across, while access to fertilizers is highly constrained, she said. And drought in wheat growing regions around the world is the most extreme it's been in over 20 years. Similar inventory concerns also apply to corn and other grains. Around the world. Most extreme. Similar inventory concerns apply to corn and other grains so it is important to keep an eye on the heavens this is from today in Finland Same picture, enhanced. And obviously, something is moving upwards and downwards since it's creating these layers around it. And we are quite north. We are under the influence of the north of polar vortex circulation system which means magnetically or electromagnetically yeah actually my phone updated i have no idea what's going on brightness i wanted to get saturation because I thought I saw some colors in those clouds. I don't know. Let's see. Highlights. This looks really different. That's really sketchy to make it like that. Contrast. Exposure. Not really, you cannot see, there was colors here on the upper side of that cloud, that's why I took a picture, but obviously it's not visible with uh, without polarized glasses. And I don't know if it's, yeah, it's in a way visible, but I tried to picture since 
there is this line of clouds and all of a sudden it spreads out which I thought is really interesting and of course I had to take a picture towards the sun which is not really good you get lens flares and stuff but I couldn't move the sun so what to do let's increase a little bit of contrast because the cloud there on the right side is also really interesting it has similar features with those horizontal lines stackings layers yeah it's not the best picture since i had to screw down the quality of the pictures <laughs> storage storage i'm running out of storage it has this shape or lines or how to put it and this thing on top actually i just noticed now and i think these are really interesting clouds because i haven't seen often these kind of clouds here and these structures here what we have which go like that actually we could take a look at this this is really interesting it has actually this kind of a vortex spiral maybe maybe it just looks like that Yeah, conversion zone clouds here between this system and this one and it's interesting to have at least some clouds because here we have the <coughs> Kursk magnetic anomaly Kursk magnetic anomaly anomaly is a territory rich in iron ores located within the Kursk Belgorod and Voronets oblasts in Russia and constitutes a significant part of the central Chernozyum region. The Kursk magnetic anomaly is recognized as the largest magnetic anomaly on Earth. This one. That's also the Kursk magnetic anomaly uh, showed in different style and here you can see like the intensity of the anomaly and I don't know exactly how accurate this me is or how this really has to be understood this map but you can really think about this in a way that is shown here because if you think we have those atmospheric layers where we have clouds and stuff which are moving and then we have these towers which are positively or northwards charged I guess they will attract high pressure systems and those blue dots which we are ex observing here they are attracting low pressure systems and since our magnetic field is weakening our pole is shifting about five miles or kilometers per month it's i guess it's kilometers roughly these kind of things like this Kursk magnetic anomaly they will affect local weather much more than they ever had in the past anyone could remember since we are talking about big cycles 12,000 years 
6,000 years. 6,000 years ago was the Noah event. How to, like, let's put it like that. There was floods and stuff. Some may have heard of that story. And the sudden emergence of all kinds of civilizations and this kind of things. Now we are at the end of that era. Which is a really interesting place to be. Especially when you somehow... How to put it? Look at things differently than most people. But I will leave it here. Get food now, storable food. Plant your own food. Get out of the city. It might get shitty. Thanks. Bye.